Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Meet the Team. I've got with me here Jeremy Elborn. Jeremy, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. How are you, Joe? Oh, I'm fantastic. Excited to meet with you, chat with you, and get let people get to know you a little bit better. I feel like I know you a little bit. We played D&D &D together once, so that was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm um, ready to reveal my darkest secrets. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, let's get right into it. So first things first, how did you get into programming? So when I was going into high school, I was choosing electives and computer programming was one of the options on the list. And I had no idea what that meant, but it sounded <laughs> interesting. So I checked it along with drama to very opposite ends of the, the spectrum possibly. Right. And that first programming course was, I believe, Visual Basic 5. It was back in 2001. Mm -hmm. So that gave me a taste for it. And from there, I went on to do uh, other programming classes in high school. I, I took Pascal for a semester and then Java. I ended up taking AP Java or AP Computer Science the very first year it switched from G C++ to Java. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> and yeah, just had a, a natural knack for it and figured like, yep, this is a good career path as uh, as any. Before that, I was thinking I would be a lawyer. And so it wow. seemed like a more attractive career field than that. So went, got my CS degree at University of Central Florida, and here I am. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, like, uh, programming languages. What programming languages do you have some familiarity with? So on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm mostly just writing TypeScript and JavaScript. But over the course of my career, I have used Java pretty extensively. I've spent a couple of years doing C++ professionally and as a student. I did Pascal in high school. I have dabbled here and there in Visual Basic when I could not avoid it, both when uh -huh. I was working in a .NET shop and all the way back in high school when I had that first class. I've used C Sharp professionally for a few years. I have written a fair amount of SQL in my time and i think that's really it cool so if there was a language that you could get to learn uh, for free what would it be rust just rust the hot new thing hmm. really i should say go because obviously google created go and we right. use it pretty extensively for tooling and stuff inside google but mm -hmm. i want to use the thing that's all hyped up so <laughs> Nice. We're cuddling rest. Nice. All right. Uh, let, how about another question about something a little bit older? P pick a technology, and you could stay within the realm of programming, but you could go outside if you want. That's no longer used. That you have. That's a, your, one of your favorite technologies. What's an example? Well, I mean, we've had people say Angular JS, but also somebody picked VHS, right? Like. Oh, I think. If you were asking me, I'd say Fox Pro. That was the first thing I learned, and I actually liked it. It was great. It's nobody does it anymore, but uh, yeah, I guess I would have to say Pascal then, Pascal. because that was my first real programming language when I really got started in programming and doing Pascal development in Turbo Pascal, even in the year two thousand one, was very formative on me. Mm -hmm. and it makes me also think of a cool experience I got to have uh, for a time. There was a member of the Angular team. His name was Chuck. I think he came to MGConf a couple of times who worked at Borland in their heyday on Turbo Pascal and on the Delphi programming language. So it was mm -hmm. really cool for me to work on the same team as him, knowing that he created the tools that I used to learn how to program. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, uh, let's switch a little bit into uh, Angular. Um, what's your favorite part of being on the Angular team? My favorite part of being on the team is all of the other people on the team. We yeah. have such a talented and compassionate group of people on the team that I am very grateful that I get to work with them every day. That's cool. That's cool. So tell us about what you do on the team and what your day to day is a little bit like a little bit. So my official title, I believe, is Uber TL for Angular. And so I'm 
here to attend meetings and answer emails so everyone else can do the <laughs> fingers to keyboard <laughs> typing coding work. Uh, more than that, I, I basically support the teams we have working on Angular in whatever capacity is useful for me at the moment. So obviously I used to be the TL for Angular components and I was TL for the framework for a little while. And so I am basically a technical consultant for all of those groups and involved in kind of setting the long-term strategy for Angular and dealing with you know, problems as they come up. It's a very nebulously defined job. Right. Right. Well, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. Um, let's move into ngconf. I know that you've been to ngconf a few times before. Do you have a favorite memory from ngconf? Well, I'll say I have been to every ngconf. Wow. Wow. There's yeah. not a lot of people that could say that. Even before I was on the Angular team, I spoke at the first ngconf when I worked on ads at Google. Huh. That's so, awesome. Yeah. My... Let's see, I have a few. So maybe the first one from the very first NG comp is when I got into my hotel room and there was a nice fruit basket waiting for me there with a <laughs> card that says, welcome, Brian Ford. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll hope that that wasn't one of my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> a, the hotel had to make our little room shuffle. But nice. yeah, there's other things. I love going to uh, Red Iguana every time I'm in Salt Lake City. That Yo, is uh, one of my favorite travel restaurants to visit. Uh, we've gone to the Moab trip a couple of times mm -hmm. that uh, you and some of the other organizers put together. Those have been super fun. There was the time uh, Shirayu got stranded while snowmobiling and we had to rescue him. <laughs> I remember that too. We were worried for a little bit. We were. <laughs> yeah. It was so much more fun to have a rescue than just drive around on snowmobiles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot more exciting. All right. Um, maybe let's turn to something a little bit more serious. How is it that you deal with imposter syndrome? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I just tell people I don't know anything. And they're like, yeah, you do. And then we continue the conversation. No, it's, it is something that I have grappled with here and there in my career. I feel like I'm at a stage now where I'm mostly over it. And I've been at, I've been at Google for just shy of 10 years. So at this point, it's, I don't know, I feel like it in most of my day-to-day -day life, I'm not dealing with it anymore. But early in my career, definitely, I had to just actively make a, an effort to have some hubris. So the manager I had when I first started at Google his name was Mark Jacobs, spelled exactly like the fashion designer. He gave me just like this throwaway piece of advice while we were having a conversation one day. Is that like in order to affect any kind of meaningful change, you have to have some hubris, right? You have to believe that you actually are good at what you are doing and that you actually do know something. Because if you don't believe those things really, then you'll never make an impact doing anything. And so you have to actively make the decision to believe in yourself and push for the things that you want to push for that you see are good directions to go. And I guess that worked out. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Uh, let's maybe wrap up with something a little bit more lighthearted. If you weren't a programmer, what would you be? Probably a chemist because mm -hmm. I feel like chemistry is the closest approximation to computer science, but without computers, hmm. where it is very process oriented. It is a system in which there are these very strict immutable rules and you can operate in them. And there is a lot of room for problem solving inside of that system. Either that or some sort of improv performer, I feel like I discovered that way too late in life to do it with any sort of seriousness but mm. it's something i really enjoy and find a lot of fun in when i get to do it so that's well, very cool very cool all right well let's head into our uh lightning round so i'm gonna ask you a series of questions here 
and uh, you get to give me, you get to pick one of the options. Now there's no explanation needed for which option you choose. It's totally fine to choose any of the options or none of the options. Um, pick one and uh, if you feel like uh, um, you want to give some reason behind or even you could pick none or you could pick both. Those are all totally okay options as well. Absolutely. Okay, here we go. Uh, Kirk or Picard? James Holden. James Holden. Well, <laughs> you, now you're gonna have to explain that to me. Now, James Holden. So I've watched maybe like three episodes of Star Trek ever. Uh -huh. but I love The Expanse. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have seen The Expanse. Which which character was? But I don't. I haven't seen it in a while. Which character was James Holden? Holden's the captain. The captain. Okay. Okay. That was like it was it was a great book series and yeah as far as sci-fi TV goes great TV too. All right, uh, Ruby or Scala? Never used either Scala. I'll just randomly pick. Okay. Uh, Game of Thrones or Squid Game? I'll go with Squid Game because of the notorious or infamous season eight of Game of Thrones. Yeah, right. A common answer. Uh, golf or mini golf? Mini golf. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Manga or mangoes? Mayonnaise. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Twilight or Batman? The Batman. Batman. The, the Batman. Batman? Yeah, the Batman. I haven't, I'll say the Dark Knight because I haven't seen the Batman, but the Dark Knight is the best superhero movie ever made hold up sign change my mind <laughs> right okay um stranger things or lost stranger things all right veet or webpack i don't see this one this one is, is a loaded question because we use webpack in the angular cli mm -hmm. so i don't have an answer for this one I feel like the loaded question is like, are we looking at Veet for, for Angular CLI? <laughs> and the answer is maybe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, you heard it here, fo here first, folks. <laughs> okay. Um, last one. Billie Eilish or Billy Joel? Billie Eilish. All right. All right. Do you remember the uh, Angular song we made out of the Billie Eilish song? Yeah. For, I've heard uh, too. Yeah. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Well, thanks so much, Jeremy. Really appreciate you taking your time to come and, and chat with me. And uh, thanks, everybody, for checking in. Hope, hope you got some enjoyment out of getting to know Jeremy a little bit better. And we're looking forward to seeing you at NGConf. Is this where I plug my SoundCloud? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, plug your SoundCloud. Well, I don't have one. Oh. <laughs> but I do have a Twitter account. So if you have questions about Angular, you can tweet at me and I will try to answer them so long as those questions aren't help me debug my app or when is X coming out. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, awesome. Thanks again. Appreciate your time and uh, check you out. We'll see everybody back at the next uh, episode of Get to Know the Angular Team.